Welcome back to Assassin's Creed 3. We're continuing on in the frontier, talking to Daniel Boone today. Finding the Sasquatch. It stands upright, as a man, but its whole body is covered in a thick pelt. Its gait is slow and lurching. I've seen it with my own two eyes. It's clever. Always at a distance, or with something between us, like it knows where I'm gonna be before I get there. Things go missing where it goes, that much is certain. All manner of trinket. It took a man's prize buck antlers clear off his cabin wall. Takes kills out of traps too, wrenching him open with his big mitts. Somebody should find it and bring back its head for the whole world to see. I missed an entry, uh, of the boy who cried wolf from earlier. Boone says, a pair of our more ambitious adventurers set out a few weeks back and have yet to return. Find out what befell our friends. Connor says, I happened across an encampment belonging to two adventurers. The scene was grisly. My thoughts were of highwaymen or war parties, but as I searched... The area, the truth of their fates came clear. A fight broke out between the two men. Vicious. One of the men drawing a sword and stabbing the other. Then he set out for home. But he received justice of a kind before long, as he was attacked and killed by a wolf. After discovering the camp, which I neglected to show you, we find Fort Duquesne. This fort sits at the junction of the Allegheny and Monongala rivers, essentially the beginning of the Ohio River. In 1754, the French and British governments were fighting over who controlled the territory in the area. When settlers from Virginia began to build a fort, French-Canadian forces chased them out, which is weird because Canadians are usually so polite. Anyway, they finished the fort, which was nice of them, and named it after the then-governor of New France, the Marquis Duquesne, which was wonderfully thoughtful. In response, the British colonial government sent George Washington to retake the fort at the Battle of Fort Necessity, and then Edward Braddock, the Braddock Expedition. Both attempts failed miserably, each being defeated before they ever reached the fort. Fort Duquesne remained uh, under French control until 1758 when the French troops abandoned and burned it. The French, or the British, moved in and rebuilt it, naming the new construction Fort Pitt, the location of modern-day Pittsburgh, which makes me think maybe they shouldn't have bothered. Now we need to infiltrate and liberate the fort from the British. The door is open to the front. There are two guards there, but it does close if we get sighted. However, wow, show off. However, there are some trees that lead directly over the wall that we can use. We need to watch out for our acrobat British guy over there. He's better than the rest, you can tell. But we'll use our trees to get in. A little bit more inconspicuous.
After we're all done with Fort Duquesne, we can search for the Sasquatch. Boone led us here. And so we need to search the area and find out if there's any clues laying about to discover what this Sasquatch might actually be. Perhaps a bear? Who knows? That's odd. A bench and some barrels in a cave. A bed hanging clothes. Something's not right. Hello. You're the chap that was down the hill, yes? Welcome. Care for a leg of venison? Maybe a hen? I have some lovely wine, if you like. A Bordeaux. No, thank you. Who are you and what is this place? I'm just a man and this is my home. Doesn't look like much from the outside, but that's sort of the point. Not much of a people person. The locals think you are a demon of some sort. Is that what they're saying now? Probably frustrated on account of my naughty little habit. I take things. I know it's wrong, I do, but I just can't help myself. Thing is, I like my privacy. If I gave you some coin, might you keep my home a secret? I'd be much obliged. So it turns out the Sasquatch is just some guy that steals stuff, a thief. And we didn't even get to answer the question. Boone, it stands upright as a man, but its whole body is covered in thick pelt. Its gait is slow and lurching. I've seen it with my own eyes. It's clever, always at a distance, or with something between us, like it knows where I'm going before I do. Things go missing where it goes. That much is certain. All manner of trinket. Took a man's prize buck antlers clear off his cabin wall. Takes kills out of traps, too, wrenching them open with his big mitts. Somebody should find it and bring back its head for the world to see. Connor says, I found the beast Boone spoke of, covered in fur head to toe, whereas the tales of his wit and bent for theft are true. Those of him being a monster are not. He is just a man. A man who chooses to live in solitude. As for the myth missing property, I might suggest being more careful. With the information we've gained, we can return to Boone and I guess not tell him about the Sasquatch. The Haunted Lighthouse, we can start. I'd been out in the pucker brush for six weeks. Game was scarce in the area, and my belly needed filling, so I broke for the coast and some crab or lobster from the tide pools. That's when I saw it. A lighthouse said to have been abandoned years ago, but there it was, fires a burning. Then the sound happened. A moaning in the wind. My heart crept up my throat so high I could taste it. Just then, a ten-point buck startled, and I took after it. Got the buck, but never went back to that lighthouse. Spirits in there, I wager, and I'd challenge any man to set foot inside. Before we head over to the lighthouse, we can have a chat with this gentleman working on his lawn. You want to impress some people? Bring down the alpha wolf in these woods. He's big, fast, mean, and elusive. Only a couple men have ever seen him, and I tell you, they wish they didn't. Some more grammar errors in the subtitles there. 
Anyways, before we do what these guys want, we're going to actually head over to Boston. I wonder if they had anybody check. You know, I, I, I just don't understand. I'm not the best at grammar and spelling and all that, but the problem here is that these are supposed to be professionals. They're checking their stuff. They're rechecking their stuff, and there's just too many errors here that just You're go heading unnoticed. You're up that way? Beaches up there are teeming with crap. Nobody goes there on account of the lighthouse. I figure so long as I keep away from it, no reason for those troubled souls to bother me. Sure, thanks for the advice. Um, anyways, I was ranting about something. All right, let's head over to the lighthouse here. It's not too far away. You can get there in a hop, skip, and a jump. Crying in the wind. I've heard it. My wife's heard it. it... There it was. The crying. Turning on eagle vision, we can look for some clues. Doesn't really seem like too much is around here. What do we have here? Some footprints. I'd do it. I would. Hogwash. Show me the pounds, and I'll sleep in the haunted lighthouse for one night. Some of these guys are making a bet. I mean, they live close enough to the lighthouse. Why not do the old sleep in it for money thing? I for one have a hard time believing that there are ghosts about. Almost every circumstance that I've ever seen um, has led me to the contrary. There's always some explanation for what's happening. And shows don't do it for me. They can't be trusted, unfortunately. Um, and if you do disagree with me, I'd like to hear about your experience. All right, let's climb this bad boy. Because I don't see anything down here um, that would tell me that there are ghosts. Oh, I saw a little magnifying glass up there. Interesting. What's more interesting is that somebody took the time and energy to pull that log up this lighthouse so that it could be used as a ghost. Well, there's nothing else here. Doesn't seem like this place is haunted, just somebody making jokes or trying to scare people, whatever. The haunted lighthouse. Boone, his uh, dialogue from before is what that says. But then in response, Connor says, I went to the lighthouse and it was abandoned. Among the debris left by its previous occupants, I found nothing more than a scarecrow there are no spirits up there. None that must be feared at any rate. Next we can travel back to the Frontiersmen.
and uh, see what Boone has to say next. What's your next story? The Headless Horseman. I've never seen him myself, but I've heard the stories from here to Kentucky. A German mercenary, Hessians, what they call him, was fighting a battle when a cannonball took his head clean off. His whole battalion was routed, and they lost the encounter. But the lad didn't die. He's been wandering the bush on horseback around the battlefield ever since, searching for his head, chasing innocents when he sees them, taking their domes for his own. He wears a pumpkin for a head now, until he finds what he's looking for. Like I said, I haven't seen him, but I have seen the bodies he leaves lying about, headless and grotesque. God rest their souls. These stories of yours are proving unfruitful. However, did you hear that there is a robot that can now perform surgery? Head replacement surgery. The body uh, gets a head put on it and all the memories of the head are still there and all that stuff is crazy. <laughs> Holy crap, Boone. That one's real! I feel like he just murders people. But, um, anyway, so I followed uh, the trail of the Headless Horseman here, but it didn't... I, I didn't find anything. Boone says all that crap that he said earlier. Connor says, I found the Headless Horseman. The stories of his taking human heads are no fable. But he was just a man. So, yeah, in this one, the headsman gets away. Next, we talk to a gentleman sitting on his porch. A cute cat. There's a valley nearby that's used in Canyon Queja Rite of Passage ceremonies. I've been told there's a cougar that staked his claim on the area and is the cause of a few too many accidents for the youngins. Might do some good to put an end to it. Probably get a damn nice pelt out of it while you're at it. All right, here we go. We can track down the feline's whereabouts. We did something like this for Boone earlier. I didn't show it. It uh, took me like eight tries. This one, however, goes a little bit faster. And uh, there it is, the little kitty cat. Oh, it's running away, I think. And there we go, okay. Yama. Clean kill, we get our pelt, and we're out of here. Next, we run up on a couple of buildings while getting a treasure. Turns out it's Johnson Hall. We read about Johnson Hall earlier a little bit, but here we go. Johnson Hall. Sir William Johnson built Johnson Hall in 1763. Well, I say he built it. He had more than a little help. He had 60 slaves to do the manual labor, making him the biggest slaveholder in the north. The property is more homestead than house. There was a saw, a sawmill and a gristmill on the property, and tenant farmers worked the lands. The exterior is wood painted to look like stone which is always a classy look, but the block houses you see on either side are actual stone meant for defense. When the house was built, the French and Indian War had just ended, so it made sense to have the house ready for an attack. That or William Johnson made some well-armed enemies in his business dealings. I would venture to say both are true. 
It looks like a very nice place though. And this place does still exist, and it has been beautifully maintained over the years. Next we find a man sitting on his steps outside of his cabin. He has the Elk Bachelor quest. Ever come across King Edward the Elk? You'd know if you had. He's never found a mate on account of his aggression. Most hunters leave him be, for fear of his charge. Grumpy old bastard's afraid of nothing. Word has it he doesn't like horses too much, but I'm not willing to risk my head on rumors. Let's go and look for this legendary elk. We are in the proximity of him. Looks like he's about 40-some meters away. There he is. The elk himself. Uh oh, I think he might have saw us. Yep, alright. We got him once. Now we need to track him down. Oh, he's a little quicker than us. He's getting away. Oh, he's coming back at us. Oh, that's another shot. Come on, dude. You can take a hit. I'll tell him. That. I should have changed to my assassin blade there. Alright, well, you know what? We'll just keep using the bow. Hopefully he goes down. Come on. Not something I meant to do. Now look at him. He's getting away. Come on, come on. Holy cow, this guy. And he didn't charge us or nothing. Oh, coming back to us. Oh, finally. I think that he would have charged us, though. And he'd have been just stronger than a regular elk. Alright, next we need to make our way to Boston to uh, find Daniel Boone in a pub or tavern. What's he going to tell us about this time? The monster of the sea, I guess. I'm not one for sailing, but I know it's out there. Some call it a kraken, others just a sea monster. They say it's 50 feet long if it's an inch, and it rolls ships for sport. You won't find me on the high seas searching for the beast. That's a guarantee I can give you. But it's a riddle that needs solving. So I suppose it's our job to go and solve it. All right, we gotta listen in on some conversations here. You seen the serpent? You bet your arse I seen the serpent. Thing was horrifying. Where was it? Just out past the breakwater. Came up to the surface to have a look, then plunged right back down again. The parts I saw was 30 feet. Who knows how much remained underwater? Wow. 30 feet. And I'm sure that there are large animals Jack in the ocean. Jack old man that's always around when the beast appears. Jack say a lot of things. But it's B1, I believe. They say he commands the thing. Some old man ordering a kraken about. What a bunch of fluff. Then I mate. A lot of men I trust spin the same yarn. Huh. This Jack's interesting. Couple more people to eavesdrop on. You hear the serpent weaver died. The old thief's buried not far from here. Hammers are polite. Good riddance. The old fellow people said called the Kraken bought the farm not long ago. Nobody's seen the beast since. So it was true then. Didn't say that. Maybe you could ask his widow. She won't leave his grave. Huh. Jack died. Talk to the old lady. And here she is mourning her dear you come husband. To pay your respects. You're the first. He didn't have many friends. 
People just didn't understand. He was a good trader, a good husband. I never wanted for anything. Just a trader, huh? I guess we should go and find his workshop. At least he left her with some land. What do we have here? It appears he was a diver as well. And this is what people mistook for the sea monster. The American sea monster. People across Boston spoke of seeing the monster. Reports varied in the details, but most agreed that it was long and black, and only appeared in the presence of an old man. Turns out, the creature was the old man himself, diving in the water with a contraption that allowed him to breathe while submerged. The, uh, the machine itself was as startling as any monster, but it poses no danger. Going back into the tavern, we can find Boone once again. This time chilling at a different table. The UFO. The first time I saw the light was back in Boston. I was trading my biggest take of the season when the fire rose behind Beacon Hill. Went straight up in the night sky, past the moon. Then it was gone. I wasn't alone. Those next to me had their heads cocked the same, craned as far back as it could go, mouths the gape. Couldn't tell you what it was, but I can tell you it wasn't of this earth. Crackpot. Also, why did he say back in Boston? Because we're here now. So you'd think that he'd said it was right here in Boston and then told me the story about where it was. What do we have here? Oh, uh, I didn't show you, but I chased off some guys giving this guy a hard time. Thank you, my friend. They had a little too much beer and didn't like the sound of my voice. I was only talking to that girl. Your accent is unfamiliar. Where are you from? <laughs> North of here, province de Quebec. And what brings you to Boston? I am a miner by trade, but it's hard to find work. People don't listen to me because of my accent. It might be our meeting was fate. I hail from a village just a few miles north of here. There are the beginnings of a mine. I do not know what is in there, but you might find what you are looking for within. I'll come have a look. If there is something good, maybe we'll talk, eh? Yeah, I stumbled on that guy earlier, and he was having some trouble. And I, I accidentally ran through that area, and the guards started chasing me. I don't even know if I killed them. I just hid away, and they ended up... Or he ended up being there, so I could do that. Alright, I looked around this area for a very, very long time, and uh, it turns out that if you want to find our UFO, you can climb up here, jump to the tree, and then all these trees are pretty close to each other, and you can jump from one to the other until you find it. I'm sure just looking up would give you the... Uh, The, the little icon, the little uh, eyeglass deal. But there it is. Turns out it was just an umbrella. Lost in the wind. Alright, here we go. The UFO. Connor. This... Uh, image sky is the talk of Boston. However, my investigation revealed that the source is most certainly of this earth, nothing more than an umbrella reflecting uh, sunlight, oh, moonlight among um, in the trees. 
Again, with the spelling and grammar, what in the world? Uh, coupled with imagination and gossip, I I don't know if this, some of this is... I mean, I get that, you know, things happen, but this is just too, too much for a professional company to be not looking over somebody's work and letting so much grammar and spelling uh, errors pass them by. I'm assuming that they hired somebody that they probably shouldn't have for reasons that they probably shouldn't have and and or they wanted to get this game out as soon as possible and they just never fixed this stuff. Maybe they thought nobody was going to read it. Yeah, I, I just don't know. It's 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 crazy that a such a big company wouldn't uh wouldn't check their work before releasing it. It's just there's just too much. That's the problem. It's you know, we all expect an error or two, especially when it comes to writing and stuff. There's just so much in here, I get that, but then this particular instance keeps happening over and over and over in this game all right next we travel to davenport homestead where we have some issues to resolve burglar on the homestead Connor! Connor! Some lads trying to break into our house. He's armed. i'm getting the boys find them i will handle it Seems to be a poacher. We have a problem with poachers out here. Maybe we need our own little police force. Ow. Need to chase this guy down and get rid of him. Excuse me, boys. Uh, we are not catching up to this guy. Shoot him in the back. What's the trouble, Connor? So you tear past chasing a man. He was trying to rob your home. It has been dealt with. What? Oh, the women. Is everyone all right? You should have been there. What? I told you to head back. And didn't they need you? Since when is a skinny runt like you safe out in the bush alone? If Diana's hurt, I swear you'll be the one to eat. In saving their home, the lumberers can now craft level 2 goods, which is very good for our homestead. All right, let's follow the boys to their parents and see what this argument's about. Oh, it's about him staying behind when the house was robbed. I guess that makes sense since we just did that. I'm gonna beat you senseless. Uh, sometimes I wait for a while uh, before. Ow. Um, sometimes I wait for a while before I do the missions just because it's. Uh... You need some sense knocked into you! Uh, it doesn't make sense to do them right away. Uh, and this one just happened. To make sense. You need some sense knocked into you. I'll flatten you. All right. 
I didn't actually know how to do these. Uh, and so, um, yeah, this was like confusing. There was no tutorial for it. There's no nothing. They're just like, here you go. And uh, yeah, so the two Irish guys end up fighting for a while. We'll just skip it from here on. And we finally break it up. Only way to shut you up. Go right. There's no need for this. Yeah. He's a blockhead. Don't kill off in a spell. Just need some time is all. Not angry, Godfrey? Me? <laughs> Not at all. Terry's just got himself a temper, and I won't let him get away with it. It's really no trouble. He'll calm down. The runt couldn't do much damage anyway. Does this happen often? Ha! Ah, I was just telling Lance how I can set that calendar by these events. It's really not a worry, Connor. But I appreciate your concern. Our lumberers can now craft level 3 goods. Now that we're done with the fight, we can go and talk to Miriam while she hunts for the white trophy. Could you make a little more noise? Sarcastic much? Been fixing to trap a cougar I've seen prowling about. The beast has snapped two of my snares already. From what I've seen, its fur is white, mad as it sounds. Its hide would be worth a fortune to the right person. I have never seen a cougar like that. I would like to help you. I'll follow you then. Stay quiet. Lady, do you know who you're talking to? I'm native, uh, native to these lands. I should be better than you at this. Hands down. Well, okay, that's not necessarily true. A little different, but quiet is probably a very good skill that Connor would have being native and probably hunting and whatnot as we saw in the beginning of the game he did so yeah got his trail yet look at the size of those claw marks better shoot true See that? He put his hand on his head. He's like, oh, this lady gives me a headache. Don't tell me what to do. All right, there's our last clue right there. He's a taste for fresh meat. Seen this before. Looks fresh. He's close. There he goes! We won't get another chance at this. Come on, Connor. We won't see him again after this. This is our only shot. Hurry up! I already killed one of these. You know, if we kill all of these, they don't come back out, out there. Okay. Um, they don't come back at all. You must be here for my new friend. I was dumping a load and he went straight in. Lucky I wasn't in there. Very. What are you thinking, Miriam? Flush and fire. Norris can back off. One of us goes in there to draw him out and the other waits out here to shoot. I will go in. Uh, I mean, you're pointing the gun at me, so that's great. Also, when he said dumping a load, do you think he meant uh, doing a number two? Oh. 
Nice shot! Thank you, Miriam. All right, our Huntress can now craft level two goods as well. And she has a little improvement at her sight. It's kind of cool seeing the, the little sights uh, get their little improvements and stuff like that. Makes it a little bit more realistic, I guess, or... Thank God you are here! Just makes it look better. Prudence Primrose. Prudence is missing. She went out to gather some things this morning and never returned. I'm worried sick. What if she's hurt? I will find her. The dog might help track her down. He has a good nose. Come on, boy! I gotta tell you, man. She has been gathering the evening primrose almost every night. She is obsessed with the oil it yields. That is all going to stop now. I don't understand why she wants so damn much of the stuff. I'm sure for medicinal purposes or something. This is the frontier, man. Things aren't... Some here. They're not looking good. The outcome might not be great. She can't be far. We should split up to cover more ground. I have a feeling it's going to be fine. If she died, it would probably add a whole nother story. Flower bag. Oh, did you hear that? And she yells, and yep, there it is, a bear. Thank you so much, Kona. Thank you. I don't want to think what might have happened if you had not arrived. I saw some primrose growing there, and the bear just came charging at me. It turns out we can't skin this one. At least not in front of Prudence. Why are you gathering primrose? Well, Warren and I have been trying to conceive a child for a long time now. I read that evening primrose encourages fertility. I'm sorry, this is not a proper conversation given the circumstance. I understand. Not Rodent! another word. Rodents! Are you all right, my love? I'll be fine. Thanks to Connor. Thank you, Connor. Once again. And look at that, their farm is looking great. Didn't tell us. I'm sure that it's like level two goods or something, but I don't know. Looks like we can talk to them. Hello, Connor. Hello. Is something the matter? No. Nothing that need worry you. I would not pry, but please know that if there was anything I could do to help, I would. It's all right. Connor already knows half of it. As you know, we've been trying to have a child, Connor, for a long time. Thus far, we have not been blessed even once. It takes its toll after a time. You must not force such things. Nature will grant you with the young one when the time is right. We hope you're right, Connor. At the very least, we are at peace here. Move it along, we can visit the homestead, or the house, which has a bunch more stuff in it now. All of our downloaded assassin gear from other games is presented on that wall. We, of course, don't have any, mon uh, any of the Templars scratched out yet. Um, and we uh, have decorated our little weapons room back here, which I believe was empty when we first got in. It's cool to see the changes that happen. Now we can go to the peg leg. Got some more? Let's have a look then. And of course, more give keepers. Him our Good on ya! I'd say that's worth another letter. He got this time. Let me see. Let me see. A veritable bounty. Shiver me timbers. That'll earn you one of these strips to be sure. I will be back for the rest. 
Back again? What do you got for me? Not to hang the jib, but it's not enough. You'll need some more. All right, so we got a couple of letters we can read here. The letter to Abel Owens. It has been a turn since last tipped our tankards together, and it will likely be a spell longer as I am in hiding off the coast of Massachusetts. I doubt this isle has ever been graced with a name. The king's men are breathing down my nape, and quarters are too close for comfort. What you will find in this package is a scroll of the greatest value to me. Something that I hold dear above all the plunder and jewels that I have scattered about the globe. Something that must remain secret, and as such I must order you not to open or read it. Carry it with you at all times and protect it. And what lies inside with your life until I find you. It's taking me longer than I anticipated to rid myself of those who stalk me, but you know as well as I, it is only a matter of time before I shake them for good. Be wary and wise, Captain William Kidd. And the first letter that we got was to uh, Hendrik Von der Hall. Hendrik, you are my most trusted advisor and closest friend, and I pray this found you safely. You know what it is I had, and you know the power it holds. They thirst for it. I know not who they are, but I know for certain they are not after me. In the name of any crown, they are something else, something secret, something relentless, something with resources beyond measure, something that frightens me like nothing else I have encountered in this life. I'm holed up on a farm just outside Boston, trying my most desperate and last-ditch uh, attempt rid myself of them, for I cannot fall into their grasp. I have sent you the last piece of my precious scroll that leads me to where I stowed it. They are upon me. If I come out to the victor, I will find you. If not, die with it. Captain William Kidd. How did old Pegleg get hold of all these? I don't know. I forgot if it said. I don't think it did. It just said that he had them. But, um... Oh, this sounds like, uh... Templars are after him. And the power it holds? Is this a piece of Eden? That we're talking about here? Either way, this uh, episode has gone on plenty long. And we've done lots of stuff. Um, so I think next time we'll deal with these, the dead chest treasure and the ghost ship. Um, but again, for now, we are all done with this episode and I thank anybody for watching. Please go ahead and comment what you thought, what I could do differently. Just, uh, anything that you gotta say would be awesome. And goodbye.